heartfelt chronicles our family's tale. In today's video, I'm going to share a personal story that shook our family to its core. My wife and I have been married for five years, and we have a wonderful four-year-old son. This year, our son started kindergarten, a significant milestone for any child. But what started as a routine part of growing up became a journey of trust, betrayal, and a father's protective instincts. Join me as I recount the events that unfolded, revealing a dilemma that tore at the very fabric of our family. As parents, we strive to create a safe and loving environment for our children. However, sometimes life throws unexpected challenges our way. One such challenge emerged in the form of a delicate family situation. You see, my wife and I take turns picking up our son from kindergarten. But there was always a lingering concern in the back of my mind. A concern rooted in the past. Trauma of a family member. This family member, my sister-in-law, had experienced a painful history that made me question whether she was the right person to trust. With our son... Her sensitivity to noise and a traumatic past created a dilemma that I couldn't ignore. As our son started his kindergarten journey, this dilemma became increasingly complex, leading to a moment that would change our lives forever. It all came to a head one evening when I returned home late from work. It was tax filing time at my company, and I found myself buried in paperwork. This wasn't unusual. As my wife and I often juggled our responsibilities to make sure our son received the care and attention he deserved. As I entered our home, I sensed a palpable tension in the air. There, in our living room, my wife and sister-in-law were engaged in a heated argument. The words exchanged were hushed, but their motions were anything but quiet. I couldn't immediately discern the cause of their dispute, but my instincts as a husband and father kicked in. I told myself, I need to check on our son. No matter what's happening between them, his well-being comes first. Ignoring my wife's protests, I made my way to our son's room, determined to ensure that he was unharmed. What I found sent a shockwave through my being. Our usually cheerful and boisterous son was there, but he wasn't smiling. Tears streamed down his cheeks, and he had a small but noticeable wound on his delicate, cherubic face. Panic coursed through my veins as I rushed to his side, scooping him up in my arms. What happened? My boy, daddy's here now, I whispered, trying to soothe him. His cries pierced my heart, and I couldn't ignore the questions racing through my mind. How had he been hurt? Why hadn't my wife or sister-in-law been with him in his time of need? I needed answers, and I needed them now. I ran out to follow my sister-in-law. Knowing that she went to pick up our child that day, she saw me and got scared. My wife stood between the two of us and said that nothing happened, only that the child fell and that he got hurt. I asked her sister to tell the truth and after putting enough pressure on her, she started crying and said that my son had an accident. But when he started crying, she slapped him to keep him quiet because it was making her nervous. She said she did not measure her strength and that she did not know that she would hurt the child. I should say that she didn't apologize at any time. That only made me angrier so I yelled at her in the middle of the street, resisting the urge to attack her. In the middle of my anger I told her I'm glad that your ex treated you the way you deserved. I don't even know how that were the first words that went out of my mouth. After calming down I returned to the house and my wife came back some time later angry with me for what I said, that this was supposed to be a secret, that her sister didn't know that I knew, that now her sister is angry with her for going around saying that she was abused in her first relationship. I asked her how she could be angry with me and not with her sister for attacking our son. She told me that she was angry with her, but that I crossed the line by insulting her in the middle of the street. She also told me that it is normal for adults to hit to the children to shut up, that their mother used to do it often, but what I did was very low. Currently she and I are sleeping in separate rooms, I sleep with a child and she in our room. She tells me that I should at least apologize to her sister and I told her that I am not going to apologize until my son is cured, and her sister better hope the boy doesn't get a scar from this. I'm not saying that physical punishment shouldn't be used with children. Only in extreme cases like my parents did with me. 
But hitting a child just for crying because he had an accident seems too exaggerated to me. Now, as I reflect on this turbulent chapter of our lives, I can't help but wonder how we will navigate the storm ahead. The lines between trust, family, and responsibility have blurred, leaving our family at a crossroads. The scars may heal, but their emotional wounds run deep, and the road to forgiveness is uncertain. In sharing this deeply personal story with you, my hope is that it serves as a reminder of the challenges families face and the difficult choices parents must make to protect their children. It's a story of love, betrayal, and enduring bonds that tie us together, even in our darkest moments. As we continue this journey, I invite you to share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Have you faced a similar dilemma within your family? How did you navigate it? Your insights may help others facing similar challenges. Thank you for joining me on this emotional journey. Don't forget to click subscribe if you want more weekly updates. Thank you.